Hi, y'all, and welcome back. So now we have a new location. I am in my bedroom, and this is because it's work from home. This is coronavirus time, and that's why this video is all about COVID-19 and updating you about your fertility. Hi friends, welcome back. Today I'm going to give you the latest updates on COVID-19 and how it impacts your fertility and what you can be doing in this time period of waiting. The truth is today is March 31st, so it's a Tuesday, last day of March. March has gone on forever, but that's important because the data is rapidly changing. And I want you to understand what the current data is, but understand that something different could come out tomorrow and change our minds completely. So everything here is very, very time sensitive. Since the last coronavirus video that I, look, I touched my face. Since the last coronavirus video that I posted, ASRM had come out with new recommendations. So everything that we're doing is completely different. So ASRM is the American Society for Reproductive Medicine. They are the professional group for our entire profession. And they give guidelines on best practices for all sorts of things from ovulation induction, twins, embryo transfers, IVF, everything. But what they've come out to say is that in this time of a global pandemic, they recommend fertility clinics all over the country cease operations. What they are not saying is that fertility care is elective or not important. They have not at all said that fertility is not essential. They have just said that at this moment, we need to be focusing on flattening the curve, protecting our patients, and protecting our staff, especially in the setting of uncertain outcomes when it comes to COVID-19 and pregnancy. So let's dive into some of that. The basics means that one, we're not doing any cycles. I'm not seeing you in the office. If you wanna schedule a visit with me, yes, come on. We can hang out in my closet right over there and I can talk to you and we can go through your history, make a game plan, Talk about how to use this time the best that you can. But what you're not going to be doing is seeing me in the office right now. We have suspended all non-emergent procedures as per the governor of Texas. Now, your state may feel different, but Texas has been very clear that the best, most ethical thing to do right now is to follow these professional guidelines and to cease all surgeries, procedures, in-office visits that are not emergent, they actually use the words essential for life. So we're not doing semen analyses, HSGs, saline sonograms, visits, ultrasounds in cycle, nothing. We finished out our last cycles and here we are. We're in a holding pattern. I have called all of my patients in the past couple weeks to tell them this, at least the ones who are getting ready for treatment. And let me tell you this, it is really heartbreaking to tell a woman who's already been waiting that you have to wait longer and that you don't know when it's going to end. And I don't have all the answers. It is breaking my heart, but it is the truth of where we're living right now. In order to do our social responsibility to save on masks and gloves so those on the front line can have appropriate PPE, personal protective equipment, we are not doing fertility care right now. That's really important. It's hard to hear. I promise you, I wanna do it as bad as you do. I want your dreams of having a baby to come true but I'm being very transparent that I don't know when that will be and that that's not what the focus of right now can be. Right now, fertility is a little bit on hold as hard as it is to hear that. ASRM is revisiting these recommendations every two weeks. So the first set of guidelines came out March 17th and the second set came out yesterday on March 30th. So every two weeks, there's going to be a different set of guidelines or perhaps they're going to affirm and that's what they did this time. They said, things are not getting better resources are limited, please do your part. And that is what we are doing right now. This doesn't mean that your fertility is not important or essential. What it does mean is that this is a good time for you to learn about your body. And that's what I'm telling all women who reach out to me. Take this time to get as caught up as you can. Research what's going on with you. Educate yourself to the terminology. Listen to podcasts and watch YouTubes or see your doctor in a virtual consult. Understand your situation understand what your options are, have honest and open discussions with your partner, your loved ones, 
your doctor so that you can have a plan ready to go when the time is right. This is also a great time to focus on your health. I mean, not that you have to. You are free to take this global pandemic in survival mode, and I think that is totally fine as well. But if you want to take this time to focus in on getting healthy, that is going to prepare you best for pregnancy. One thing that we have learned is that as far as women go, the body starts to recruit that next group of eggs about three months prior. I always use the analogy of a vault. You have a vault of eggs, you're born when the vault is full, and the vault is empty when you go through menopause. And throughout your life, you're constantly losing eggs. So what happens is that vault keeper starts to select out eggs about three months prior. So the things you do the last three months can be very impactful. So taking the right vitamins and supplements, eating a diet rich in fruits and vegetables, whole grains, vegetable protein sources, doesn't mean you never have to have meat or can never have meat if you want to have meat. But what we do know is that meat has some environmental chemicals and toxins in it. And by avoiding that and giving your body some other sources of protein, plants, so plant-based eating, you can see improvement in fertility rates and ovulation rates and a lot of different things. This is a great time to get in touch with yourself, practice mindfulness, to try to exercise if you can, and maybe lose weight if that's something that's on your to-do list. I'm not saying any of these things are easy. I'm just saying these are options for how you could approach this time. You could also stop some of those negative behaviors, drinking, smoking, marijuana, things like that that may adversely impact your fertility. Same for men too, sperm change every three months. If you're in a holding pattern with your partner, you don't wanna get pregnant soon, this is a good time for you both to go really clean, take your vitamins, stop the bad habits, focus on your health, get outside and go on walks, and take care of yourself. Now, what is the current data on pregnancy? This is the number one question that I am getting asked all the time. Well, if I can't do fertility treatments, is it safe for me to get pregnant? And I will admit this is a big part of ASRM's recommendations is that the pregnancy data is unknown. We are dealing with limited data and we don't have very much that's current. Pregnancy is a nine month period. You're then going to give birth. We do have some third trimester data that is confusing. So what we have seen is that an increased risk of preterm birth appears to exist in women who had COVID-19 in the third trimester of pregnancy. There have been reports of growth restriction and stillbirth. We've also seen higher risk of pregnancy complications like preeclampsia and HELP syndrome. That's very complicated with the lab values that we normally see with COVID also. There's also risks and what this means for pregnancy. OBGYNs are working so hard. Labor is such a delicate stage, meaning that you're breathing heavy a lot. Is that if you need emergency C-section, you have to be intubated. Those resources may be limited, and that could also put your staff and your team at risk. So what that means is that they're recommending early epidurals to have a very controlled situation so that if you need an emergency, you don't have to go to sleep. They're recommending masks. So imagine wearing a mask the whole time. And if you're positive, they're recommending separating your baby for 14 days. So pumping, being able to have somebody else feed the baby, but essentially being quarantined from your baby. There are also hospitals in areas where this is really endemic right now that are going back and forth on if it's appropriate to limit birth partners and not have somebody in the labor and delivery room with you. That's controversial. I'm not here to argue the pros and cons of that. I'm just here to tell you, this is a rapidly changing situation. And so if you are in your late trimester of pregnancy already, or you're considering being, getting pregnant now, you don't know what the situation may be in the fall. So you want to be the highest risk population. You want to avoid going in public. When I talk about socially distancing, that doesn't mean go hang out with your neighbors or go see just your parents or just a few people, like really hunker down and take care of yourself. Masks in public is controversial right now, although I will tell you most physicians are believing data showing that droplets, these little fomites that live on surfaces can live in the air after a person has been there. Doesn't mean it's truly like migrating in the air all over the place, but wearing masks in public or not being the person to go in public, that's stuff to consider if you're currently pregnant. Now, vertical transmission, early reports of vertical transmission, mom to baby transmission coming out of China reported no cases of vertical transmission. Notably, Chinese do a lot of C-sections over vaginal deliveries. Since then, there have been case reports of women who have coronavirus who are passing it to their baby. And what we do not know is are they passing it to the baby 
vertically, meaning in your body. I have coronavirus and I'm pregnant and it's going through the placenta to the baby. What we don't know is if it's happening in the birth canal or during a C-section or is it happening immediately after birth or with air contact? That has not been answered, but this is posing the question of vertical transmission, mom to baby transmission, and making us think very carefully about what it means to be pregnant in the time of COVID. Now, what we don't know is first trimester exposure and the risks. These reports have not come out of China, which was the epicenter of this, and we don't have any state's data yet. So what this is telling us is that if you get pregnant in the first trimester and you're exposed to coronavirus, is there potentially a higher risk of birth defects? We think not because cousin viruses like SARS and MERS, we did not see the same affiliation. But the truth is lack of data is not reassurance. It is simply lack of data. The other thing that is interesting right now is that pregnant women reportedly have not been getting sicker. This is very interesting because usually pregnant women get sicker from respiratory illnesses. They tend to have a higher rate of pneumonia, ICU admission, because the physiologic changes of pregnancy suppress their immune system, putting them at risk for contracting diseases, and also decrease their lung capacity, making it harder to breathe. So typically respiratory illnesses are not tolerated well in pregnancy. We haven't currently heard of reports of that. However, we are all really cautious and wary of that. One thing that I'm also talking to my patients a lot about is utilization of hospital resources. And what does that mean? That means if you got pregnant right now, carrying on your way and an emergency happens, specifically a first trimester pregnancy emergency, ruptured ectopic pregnancy needing emergency surgery, miscarriage with heavy bleeding needing blood transfusion or an emergency procedure, can the hospital handle you? Is there an operating room that can take you? Is there blood available? Is that an option for you? And I think that poses a very good question about is it worth it right now when we're looking at the peak of this disease to be maybe four, six weeks, two weeks, depending on where you live, is it worth it if you get pregnant right now? Could you be at that high risk spot when the hospitals are at full capacity? And so what I'm telling most of my patients is maybe this is not the moment take a couple months off, get healthy, focus on you, stop your fertility journey. Because then if one of those bad first trimester outcomes happened, you could revisit this and at least have that taken care of safely. And I think that's a real concern for patients who are in areas where the disease is saturating hospital beds. By no means have any societies come out and say women should not be pregnant. ACOG, the American College of OBGYN has not said that. But I think that that's an important question that has to be answered personally. So I'm telling everybody, this is a delicate decision, but you need to be really thinking through the pros and cons of what it means to get pregnant right now if you're on the fence and trying to make that decision. To all of my fertility patients or to the women all over the world who have had their journeys halted because of this, I'm really sorry. I'm so sorry. It broke my heart and it was the first time I broke down and cried about this whole situation was after calling women and telling them day after day that their plans were on hold. That was what broke my heart and what really made this pandemic feel very, very real. I know if you're going through there, I can't imagine what it's like. I know what it's like to be deep in the throes of infertility. And I know what it's like to be a person living in the middle of a pandemic, having plans and life changed and put on hold. Putting both of them together has got to be devastating. Try to not look at this as that your goals are not important because they are. I promise you, those of us in your community, your goals matter, your fertility matters, and we are going to help you get there. We want you to get there in the safest way, and we want to really understand the implications of what it means to be pregnant during this time period. Please feel free to reach out to your doctor. So my patients, reach out to me. Other people reach out. Most of us are happily doing virtual consults, explaining what we know, Every clinic in every state's a little bit different right now. So reach out, get information, and try to view this time that none of us expected as something that can help you regroup and be in a better position when the time is right for you. I can't make this go away. We all have to do our part. We have to stay inside. We have to stay away from other people. We have to wash our hands. We must be aware and be careful. But what we can do is take care of each other 
and take care of ourselves during this time. I'm going to be here educating you guys, refocusing to giving good educational content as time is going on so that you guys can have the latest updates. And if the situation that happens right now is that you learn a little bit more about your body and your journey gets delayed just a little bit, hopefully we can make the best of that outcome. Please let's not be this something that devastates you or your family and impacts you personally. My heart is going out to all of you who could be impacted by this. I'm also so proud of all of our true first responders on the front line, all of my colleagues who are battling this day in and day out. You guys are working hard to keep the rest of us safe, so thank you. As always, you guys, I have tons of fertility information on the As Woman podcast. Feel free to go listen and check out any topics you want. I would love to hear what future episodes you'd like to hear, so just leave a note also, and I'll be answering any of your coronavirus questions in a Q&A coming up. I don't have all the answers, but I'm happy to share with you what I know. Thank you guys. Stay safe.